Okay, so your guest is gonna be here. Okay, you tell, just tell me who the guest is gonna be. He's gonna be here early. I need to know who it is. It's gonna be a big surprise. I get it. I'm gonna be. It's gonna be shocking. I know. Who is it? No, you're kidding me, man. You, you joke. The Rock. The Rock is gonna be here in my office. And look, the Rock. The Rock is gonna be here. The Rock, man. The king of the smack it down, the most electric fun. Oh my god, the box is gonna be here. Hey, hey coach, coach Sean. What? Wait a minute, Sean. The rock, you the rock? Yeah, I'm here for the interview. Oh man, I just got my hopes up. I thought I was gonna meet the most electrifying man in sports entertainment. I'm, I'm a pretty good second. You the most electrifying man at Southwest. But you're no rock. No, the rock. All right, my take one this week. I am joined by Coach Rock, Southwest Tennessee Community College baseball coach. Coach Rock, thank you for joining me this week. Yeah, thanks for having me. Coach Rock, I want to start out with your playing days, first of all. Growing up, you played at Carville High School in the area community. Some of your players might have played against you back in the day, you never know, but uh, or know of you, basically from the rivalry games back in the day. Just talk about your playing days at Collierville High School. Yeah, I played for uh, Coach Jeff Hopkins at Collierville, graduated in 2010. Um, played with a lot of good players in high school at Collierville, played a lot of, against a lot of good local players. There's a lot of you know college talent that, that left in uh, our class and, and played all you know all throughout the the mid south, different different schools, and then uh, you know. Put the University of Memphis right after that. So, yeah, what can you tell people about Coach Hopkins, a legend coach in this area? Yeah, he, he definitely got all of our guys ready for college baseball. Like he was tough on us, um, but showed us how to you know how to play the game the right way and how to how to you know be prepared for moments. And uh, you know he really, like I said, he got us ready for to play college baseball. And all of our guys that went off and played in college all had success. I think that it, uh, it goes back to what we learned in high school. I think. Give me some games that you have. Uh memory of they did pretty dominant on the field and pitching wise. Yeah, we always played a tough schedule. I mean at Carryville. Um, we kinda, you know, traveled around and played all the schools here in Memphis. We also went to different parts of the state and played and uh, we came in third place um, in the state in my, my uh, junior and senior year. You know, we lost to Farragut in the semifinals each year and uh, but well, I mean, obviously playing Houston every year was the big game. Uh, playing against Bartlett was always a big game. Uh, you know, back then it was kind of us in Houston really competing in the district championship every year, so that was always a, a big game for us. But uh, played a tough schedule throughout the whole spring and, you know, a lot of good memories. They didn't get to play on, like you said, at the University of Memphis. You played under your dad. Yeah. Uh, so just talk about that, like you got to play under your dad. Yeah, it was cool. Um, you know, I got really close with my dad through getting a chance to play for him. You know, I was always obviously close with him growing up, but I spent every day with him for three years basically playing for him. and. Um, you know, it was pretty cool. He treated me like everybody else. He didn't treat me like a special, you know, just his son on the team. He treated me like, you know, everybody else on the team. So I got a true experience and uh, learned a lot from him, obviously. I knew a lot of stuff that he had taught me growing up, but just seeing the ins and outs of how a college program is supposed to be run each day um, really kind of prepared me later on for the role that I'm in now, I think. So. Give me some games for college that you had to. Yeah, um, that you had some memories. My, my, my junior year, um, you know, I had a really good year, but I remember pitching uh, in conference at Rice. They were actually ranked, and we beat them on Friday. Sam Mall, who was uh, in my, my class from St. Benedict, he's still not, he, he, in the big leagues with the A's now. He pitched on Friday and threw eight and two thirds against them, and then uh, I, I went nine innings the next day. We beat them in, in the series, so it was a cool. 
one-two punch for that series. That was always a, a fun, fun weekend going to Rice and playing. Um, and then, you know, playing against Marshall, that, that was um, a big one at home for us. We, uh, I pitched against Aaron Blair, who pitched for Marshall. He pitched in the big leagues for a few years. And we beat him one nothing, and we both did complete games. That was, oh, wow. that was a fun, uh, fun weekend as well. But, um, you know, kind of like the Carnival deal at Memphis, we played a very tough schedule as well. So we played a lot of good teams. And, Ole Miss. Uh, yeah, play, played a, little, a bunch of guys that are still playing professional baseball. So it was, it was a cool experience. Is it true? That how crazy that environment really is in East Carolina. Yeah, that's the toughest place to play in that league by far. Uh, the fans are right on top of you. They're crazy, um, and you know they're they're getting on to you during the game. But after after the game, you know they they give you some food and stuff. Right. So it, it, it's a it's a very healthy environment as far as uh, once once the game is over. But during the game, man, it gets pretty tense. Those guys are on you. So. Just talk about being part of the San Diego. Padres organization right after college. Yeah, um, got drafted in the 11th round my junior year. Um, you know, pitched a couple of years there. I end up getting hurt, hurting my shoulder. But um, I never thought I'd be a professional pitcher. I thought, you know, I was a, a pretty good high school player, a pretty good college player. Just had a really good junior year at Memphis and had a chance to get drafted and, and played. So once once I got there, I just really tried to soak in every moment because I, I was, you know, it was. Obviously, a goal of mine to play professional baseball at some point, but I didn't know if that was ever going to be a reality. So, getting there and having a chance to do that, um, learned a lot, played with a lot of guys that are still playing, obviously, in the big leagues now. And um, yeah, it learned a lot from my time, uh, those two years with the Padres. And talk about getting that phone call. Yeah, so I mean, I kind of knew I was going to get drafted just based off of what we had with with pre-draft meetings and stuff. I didn't, you obviously don't know when you're going to get drafted, so and you don't know who's going to draft you. So, um, you know, getting that call was pretty cool. I was I was on the one of the first picks of, the, of day three of the draft, so uh, my anxiety wasn't uh, going too long that day. I was one of the first picks of day three, so um, it was a cool experience, and I was ready to get to work right after that. All right, now you're gonna be. Now we're gonna talk about your Southwest baseball coaching career so far. Uh, I believe this is what year two. This is, year this, is, this is year six. Actually. Oh, year six. Time, yeah. time flies by, people. <laughs> hey, time flies. Yeah. So, so this I've been here since the. Uh, well, I got hired in the summer of seventeen, and this is my my sixth spring here. Could you say what it could be the difference between last year's group that finished twenty six and thirty two, and five and twenty one in the conference between this year's group who's thirty four. In 13 with the 79 conference record? Yeah, I mean, if you look at our roster, it's a lot of the same guys that we had last year and this year. I think last year, all of our guys played as freshmen and were very talented. We we're just kind of inexperienced, and you know, the grind of a long season can get to get to the freshmen a little bit. So everybody's back for their sophomore year this year, and uh, obviously everybody's a little bit more you know physically ready for for, for the grind of this year, mm -hmm. but more mentally ready, like everybody knew what they were getting themselves into when the season started. And um, you see a lot of guys that have played every day for two years now, the kind of the experience is paying off and, and, and you know, we're a little bit more experienced in teams we play against. I think that's a big factor in why we're having success. And, you know, our guys have learned how to play the right way too, I think, and that, that's a big uh, key of why we had success this year. Yeah, this year, uh, y'all living in the conference, like I mentioned, y'all had swept Jackson State. And I think that people, Really haven't really talked about across the city that much. Got to two out of three against Dyersburg State. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously Dyersburg's been a uh, you know a kind of a power here the last eight or ten years, and um, you know we finally have gotten to where we can be competitive with those guys with, with, with the rosters that we have and with the guys that we recruit here. So um, yeah, it was it was a good weekend. You know, we we, we lost the, the first game of the series, and then. Um, you know, Brumley and Dixon threw the next day for us, and went, we went through two shutouts against them. So having those guys um, pitch the way they did against those, you know, th those good hitters they have at Dyersburg, it, it kind of showed that we're kind of here and, re and ready to compete in this league, I think. What can you say about your uh, starter right here, Colton Brumley? Yeah, obviously he's been a, kind, of, kind of a workhorse these last couple of years. You know, he was... Uh, you know, top three in the, in the country in innings pitched in complete games last year in the country, and he's leading the country in innings pitch right now. So when you hand the ball to him, we kind of say, hey, it's your game, man. You're, you're going to start it and finish it. And uh, he kind of embraces it, and, and our, our team kind of feeds off of it. My last question regarding D1 talent. You got some D1 talent on your roster, and Tyler Harrington and B.J. Maynard. What can they tell, bring to the program that, like they had this year? to the other guys that maybe that are true freshmen on this roster. Yeah, I mean, the, obviously both those guys came from Memphis. They're so coming from a Division One school. They uh, they're able to see what it looks like at that level. So when they get here, 
You know, they're, they're physically ready to play because they played at a high level for a couple of years at practice and in games at Memphis, but they can kind of share with our freshmen um, kind of what they've seen so far and what they need to do to prepare to get ready for that level, hopefully, in a couple of years when, when our freshmen on our current roster are, are, are moving on to those schools, you know, in the fall, I guess the fall of 20, uh, fall of 25. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of the – the, the heavy down effect from what BJ and what from Tyler have done for us, passing information and passing you know the work habits down to our young guys and hopefully that, that pays off for them. Okay, for this weekend we just talked about before off air real quick. Y'all got rain in the forecast for Friday, mm -hmm. so this weekend's games are pushed back to Saturday and Sunday. Just give people the Twitter handle for people to keep updated on this weekend regarding the games and whatnot. Yeah, so it's I think it's at SW. Um, underscore 10 baseball. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly what the, what the Twitter handle is. If you just search Southwest Tennessee baseball on Twitter, you'll be able to see it. And then um, you can check our athletic website um, and it, it'll have uh, the updated schedule on there. And, um, you know, our softball coach runs our uh, Facebook page for Southwest Athletics too. So all, all three of those places will have uh, updated uh, game times and stuff like that. Coach, I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thanks. All right, my take two this week, Mr. Colton Brumley. Brumley, appreciate it, man. No problem. It's been a couple of years, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, talk about your Barlett High School playing days under Coach Josh Stewart for a second. Uh, it was great. Um, going in there as a freshman, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, I was always one of the little guys. I was I was probably 5'2", five 5'3", five in high school, so I never really got the chance that everybody else got. But uh, once it came to my junior and senior year, I kind of picked up the ball and uh, I started pitching instead of uh, doing infield and hitting, and that was kind of my strong suit, and uh, that's kind of what led me to play in more games as well. So, absolutely. Just talk about some games that we've got some great memories on. Uh, so many. Uh, I would say Farragut at Farragut. That place is it's ridiculous. Uh, there's hundreds of fans everywhere, and you know, being out of town, and so you don't really know what to expect. And going in there, they're one of the top teams in the nation every year. So. That was probably one of my favorite games to ever throw in. How about a district game? District game? Any game against Arlington <laughs> or any game against uh, Cario or Houston. You know, you got – we had Grayson hit, uh, played against him in the regionals, so that was always a good one. Um, Absolutely. You know. Now fast forward to your Southwest playing days so far. You're, you know, doing pretty well on the mound. You're 10 and 2 under 12 starts, 103 strikeouts, and you're – Pretty much turned it up. Yeah. How's that feel so far? It feels great. Um, I, I just always go out there. I try to do my best. Uh, uh, depending on the team, you know, it kind of makes me work harder than usual. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that on the staff, I'm the number one, so I got to prove myself. And uh, you know, just going out there every day and trying to do my job. Talk about Coach Rock. Coach Rock. <laughs> he's by far one of my favorite coaches that I've ever had. Uh, you know, coming into practice every day, I have a great feeling, and I'm always excited to get after it. And uh, practice every day is very, it's very chill, but at the same time, we get our stuff done, and, you know, we look forward to every weekend playing in our series. Okay, yesterday y'all made a road trip to Missouri. Just talk about that. I know you didn't pitch or whatnot, but yeah. talk about those two wins yesterday. Uh, it was great wins. Uh, Three Rivers is always a good school. Um, they've always had a good program. they got good pitching staff and good lineup. Uh, I didn't play. I was I was doing charts all day, but you know, doing them charts, <laughs> I can always tell how good the game's gonna go. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was a great two wins. It got us to thirty six, so or thirty four. Right. Talk about maybe I know throughout the year you're like a Friday starter at one point. Now you're a Saturday starter. What is, is there like really a difference between the two? Uh, so on Friday, those are the nine inning games. Okay. And uh, I threw I threw all the nine inning games last year and. Um, Typically, I would go, I would go between six to eight innings, and uh, but this year the the Saturday games are all seven. So I typically, when I go out there and coach hands me the ball, I know I got the whole game to myself. So uh, I feel more confident throwing in the seven inning games and getting my chance to throw the entire complete game. Rather you can throw all nine though, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I could, but it'd be, it'd be, I'd be pretty exhausted the next day. So um, I know this. Community college is different with the pitch count rule because you know in high school you had the pitch count rule yeah. where you could only throw so many pitches and rest so many days as well. Mm -hmm. Just talk about that adjustment. Um, you know, in high school you always got the uh, however many pitches you throw is how many days you have to rest. But with college, I mean, you go out there and 
it's pretty much up to the coach whether how long he wants to leave you in or not. And if, if you're doing good, you I mean you throw him in there. Uh, it all kind of goes down to recovery for me. Uh, the more I recover and the more I work out, uh, the the less days it'll have for me to to get better. So uh, from Saturday to Saturday, I got plenty of time to rest and uh, get the soreness out and be ready for the next week. What's next for Mr. Colton Brimley after Southwest? Uh, I'm committed to Southeastern University. It is one of the top NAIA programs in the nation, so I'll be heading down there uh, next fall. Why there? Why there? Uh, yeah. They got a great coaching staff. Um, they're always top in the nation. They always got good. Uh, they always get good looks from pro ball, and which is you know the end goal for for me and hopefully everybody that plays. Absolutely. Do you see? Can you see yourself maybe going to like anywhere else after NIA? Maybe get your yeah, like, D1 uh, or D2 maybe. Uh, not school wise, no. But uh, hopefully, hopefully the draft or even independent ball. So one of those two options for sure. If anybody wants to follow Colin Bradley on any social medias, where can they find you? Uh, Twitter is at Colton Bromley twenty one, and Instagram is at Colton Bromley. So. All right, Colton Bromley. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Man. No problem. Man. We caught up with Johnny Gray, USA Baseball Stadium, director of operations over there, and keeps Coach Rock's baseball field in charge during rainouts and, and whatnot as well. Is this springtime outside? It's getting a little bit warmer out. I'm joined by the legend Johnny Ray with USA Baseball Stadium. And Coach Ray, I don't know if called you coach because you were a coach back in the day as well. So welcome to the JS Report this week. I appreciate that. Probably the first time you and I met, I, I was coaching at that time. Was that like Southwest? Southwest Tennessee, that's right. Dang, that was back 2005 for me. Yeah. That'd be about right. Wow, time flies by. But uh, Coach Ray, I just wanted to talk about like what has USA Stadium been doing over the years. First of all, I want to give kudos to you and your staff for putting those amazing baseball fields together for one thing. How many baseball fields are you up to now? Currently, as of right now, we're at seven that we, we're playing on. We've got two more that uh, will be ready by summer. And, and I think at that point, I think we're going to take a break just for a little bit and uh, kind of start working on some of the other facility needs as, as far as maybe uh, restaurants and, and maybe even um, being told a possible hotel or two on, on site. Oh, wow. That's pretty impressive right there. What can uh, some fans like... Can it be used for like a baseball and softball field, or can it just be used for like a baseball? We're definitely multi-purpose. Uh, we have, uh, last fall, we, we started our first adult uh, slow pitch softball tournament. Uh, the good thing about our fields is they're all interchangeable. We, we can move our, our mound completely off. We can move it up to shorter distances. Our bases, we can put in at, at whatever distance that, that needs to go in. Uh, but. Uh, we, we found out last fall that there's a great need here for, for adult softball. We, we've run some, some pretty high quality uh, events um, through, actually started through one of my former players uh, at Southwest, uh, Josh Maritzi, and, and it's kind of taken off from there. We're, we're going to host the end of this month, the end of April, we're going to host over 100 teams softball event. Wow. That we'll have teams coming in from all over the country. And all the fields over you is pretty much probably. <laughs> every, every one of them will, and, and we'll probably be needing other fields. But, you know, yeah, ba baseball is, is why that facility was, was developed uh, from what it was, you know, four years ago when, when the new ownership came in. Uh, but uh, we, we've even, you know, had some football events out there, uh, short-lived, but uh, we, we found that, you know, we can make a lot of things happen out there. What's the difference between grass, infield, and outfield, which I'll get now is just turf? What's the difference between the two? For baseball game-wise? It, it's a cleaner game to me. There, there's no <laughs> bad hops. Uh, the, the playability of the surface is, is always there. Uh, the only time you really uh, notice that, that the, the field is not in tip-top shape is maybe when you've had some rain or a heavy dew or something where there is some moisture on, on, the, on the turf. Uh, but the, the system that we have in place to, to shed the water, it purges it really, really quick. So we can, we can get it in, uh, get back on the field at, at, a, at a rapid pace once uh, the rain you know, ends. Just talking about the Cla USA Classic, first of all, or next with me that y'all had last week. Uh, just talking about like how, I know it was crazy because it did the rain and tornadoes and, and a whole bunch of rain. But just talking about how 
It was as a whole last week. Yeah, it, first of all, it was fantastic competition. That was the first thing that uh, that, that I was excited about. And, <clears throat> and just not knowing some of the out-of-town teams that were coming in and, and trying to do some homework, we had uh, a 22 state champion from the state of Illinois. We had a 22 state champion from, from Georgia. And then we also had, I think, of the 16 teams that competed, I think 13 of them were in their state's state tournament. Uh, so it was a high level uh, event and, and uh, some, some very, very competitive games. Uh, Father McGivney uh, in, out of Illinois was, was our champion and they actually defeated Edwardsville. Uh, they were pretty much neighbors. One of them's a public school, one of them's a private school. If, if their competition level rises anything like it does here in, in Memphis when the publics and privates play each other, uh, then that gives you an idea of, of, of how highly contested this was. And, and it, was, it was pretty awesome because those teams are probably about 25 miles apart from each other, but they never play. So oh, wow. they, they came all the way here. And, and that, 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 <laughs> yeah, that, high, that, that uh, championship game was very high motion and, and uh, highly competitive and highly spirited. Maybe they'll definitely put them on a schedule against each other now because, like you said, they're only 25 what, miles away. Yeah. So hopefully they'll get, get a future game in down the road. Um, just talk about y'all are hosting like 14 and under to all the way down to what, 8 and under maybe? No, we, we do nothing younger than 13. Okay. So, so we just, two weeks ago, we just had our first 13 and 14 new tournament. Uh, we had 54 teams that, that came in from New Jersey, New York, Michigan, Chicago, uh, St. Louis, Dallas, Atlanta, and of course we had several local teams. Uh, you would think you know, hosting a, a, an event like that where teams coming in from all over the country, that it was going to be very competitive, and, and it was. I mean, there were some, some really high-quality kids that are, are just in the beginning stages of, of their career, uh, but these teams, it's just, it's graduated to another level uh, of baseball, in, in my opinion, and, and uh, then once the summer gets here, we'll start our 15 to 18s once the high school season started. But no, we, we run nothing younger than, than 13. Okay. You get to see a lot of Southwest Tennessee community college baseball games since they do play at USA. Just talk about the job that Coach Rock has done the last couple of years. I know last year was kind of up and down here just because they had a lot of transfers that came in. They were used to the JUCO basketball or baseball around the city of Memphis and Middle Tennessee and East Tennessee. But just talk about the turnaround that Coach Rock has done this year compared to last year. Man, I, I'm excited for those guys. They have they they finally turned the corner. You know, it, it's it's been several years of uh, of baseball that that just wasn't com competitive. But they're I think yesterday got their 30th win of the season, uh, and and they have uh, they've got some really good good quality wins in their in in their back pocket. You know, they've uh, they took two out of three from Dyersburg State. Uh, they opened the well, season. Last time that happened. Yeah, it, it's it's been a while, and uh, I, I know that uh, uh, that the conference as a whole, uh, from top to bottom, is is always good. And and Southwest has has put them in themselves in a position uh, to finish in the top of the conference, which hadn't hadn't been done uh, in many years. And I know that was. In talking to Eric, that was that was his goal. He wanted when the when the regular season ended, he wanted to be in the top four in the conference, and that is definitely within sight. And uh, you know, I, I'm ecstatic for those guys. They they got a great nucleus of kids. They got some high character kids, and uh, you know, one of one of their uh, their workhorse on the mound, uh, Bartlett area guy, and I'm I'm telling you, he is uh, he's he's really thrown the ball well all year. And his name is Colton Brumley. Yeah. Um, and then just give me another few players for Southwest real quick. Like Trey Harrington's done pretty well. Uh, B.J. Bannon does pretty well as well. Yeah, well, both both of those guys you mentioned are, are both University of Memphis transfers. Uh, they they've come over and solidified that offense. Uh, Harrington has has just been consistent, both offensively and defensively this year. Uh, from from the word go. He's a team leader, uh, again, very high character kid. And uh, what I've noticed about BJ is he's he's just he makes things happen. He he's not gonna he's not gonna hit you big three run homer or, or be a big power threat. But he's always gonna be on base. He's always gonna be uh, be be making a, a, a solid defensive play. 
and he just he's just a winner. How do you think this baseball season as a whole for the high school ranks? You think it's probably the best competition that you've seen in the last couple of years? I haven't been able to see everybody uh, to date, but in, in knowing uh, what's out there, I, I, have, yeah, I, I have seen Houston. Uh, I know uh, they're, they're going to be very strong at the end of the season. Arlington has done well uh, early on and, and put up an impressive record. Uh, as, as far as the public schools, and, and you know, Powell will be strong uh, when they, they've got uh, Crabtree on the mound who's, who can go out and, and, and beat anybody. So, you know, and, and you never can count out Bartlett. I, I just, I, I love what, what Josh and those guys do, and, and I know um, having, you know, a, a, a solid nucleus of kids, and, and I think they've got about eight seniors on, on their team. You know, if you've got a senior heavy team, the, those teams uh, always seem to play well down down the stretch. So, you know, just looking at the public school side, I, I think those those four uh, are, are going to have a dog fight to, to get out. And then in the private school side, uh, you know, I, I really like what what uh, Jason Mott over at Christian Brothers has done. Uh, Trenton Lines, uh, he was absolutely phenomenal uh, at the USA Classic. Hit four home runs in four games, and and. Uh, uh, they, they're, you know, typical Christian Brothers team. They're, they're strong, they're physical, and, and well coached. Uh, and I, I think Briarcrest is going to give them a, a run for their money. Uh, the Dallas kid on the mound, he, you know, he can go up against anybody. So, uh, really like what Coach Hopkins does there at Briarcrest. Um, and then, in the small school privates, North Point Christian, they, they could very easily be the best team in West Tennessee. I mean, they, they've really gotten off to a good start and. Great and, wins uh, over Carville, yeah, yeah. Chris they, They've proven themselves to be very strong. So uh, I, I think that's pretty much the cream of the crop as, as far as we have. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be some surprises going down the stretch here in, in April, I'm sure. If anybody wants to contact you regarding the play in any future tournaments, what's the best way to go? Uh, I think most everybody has my, <laughs> my cell phone number. I, it it, it kind of gets out there. But, you know, my, my cell phone number is 901-413-1920. Or you could email me at uh, jray, J-R-A-Y, at usastadiumtn.com. What about Twitter? I actually have Twitter. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I get a lot of my information off Twitter, so it's uh, it's it's simple. Johnny Ray 24. And that's my baseball preview coach, Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray, appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. All right, my take four this week. Let's give some baseball teams. Arlington's done pretty well up to date. They're 19 and three after uh, beating Carville one game this week. Uh, for softball, everybody's beating up everybody, so it's really competitive this year. Anybody could basically go to Murfreesboro and bring maybe a state championship back. Soccer-wise, Briarcrest and MUS and Chris Miller are still up to the top in private schools, and. Uh, Anybody could be bring a gold or state championship back in soccer as well. And hey, go out and support the lacrosse teams as well because lacrosse is going on right now. And there is also a lot of track and field events going on right now as well. So go out and support the kids this week if you have time as well. That's my take for this week. Thomas, you all right? Thomas. Oh, oh. What happened? The, the Rock was here. Yeah, I just interviewed him on the JS report. Oh, was he as electrifying as he was when I met him? Oh, absolutely. Southwest Baseball, the most electrifying team out there.